In this video we're going to explore the builder design pattern and we're going to see how it is used with a Google API client in an Android application. So first of all, what is the builder what is the builder design pattern? It's a creational pattern. Remember that our design patterns are typically categorized into structural, behavioral, or cre creational. Where creational means we are creating objects. In this case, we're creating an object that aggregates some kind of complexity. In other words, we have a lot of options or variations that we want to know at the point in which we are creating this object. Additionally, we want to separate creation of the object from the object itself. In other words, we're trying to create an object of one type, and we have a specific builder class which knows how to create objects of this type, and more importantly, knows how to apply the variations and the options to this created object. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say I want to build a pickup truck. So the pickup is the object type that I want to build. But I've separated this building process into a separate class called Pickup Builder. So you see that I'm invoking a Pickup Builder constructor, and then after that I'm calling three methods that begin with add. Add air conditioning, add Bluetooth, and add four-wheel drive. So in this case I'm saying these are the options that I want to add to my pickup when I'm creating the pickup. Now notice the final method which is build. That says, okay, I have all the options selected that I want, now I want my pickup builder to create a new pickup. In other words, each of the methods that you see here, add air conditioning, add Bluetooth, add four-wheel drive, and build, all four of those methods are methods that are defined on this class called pickup builder. The final method called build is going to take the information that we collected by choosing which add methods we would invoke. Maybe there are more than just three, maybe there are 12 to represent the different options that we could have on a truck. But nonetheless, the build method is going to go back, realize what methods were called, and then it, the return type of this build method is a pickup. So once again, pickup builder, this is a class, has a method called build. The method called build has a return type of pickup, not pickup builder, but pickup. So the build method is actually going to create an object, and that object is going to be stored in this variable called pickup. So what's going on? The methods are all chained together, and then build is, is what takes a look at that final configuration and creates an object. So that pretty much explains what I just said in the previous slide. So let's take a look and let's consider how we use this with the Google API client in an Android project. In this case, we are going to be implementing some GPS capabilities. So we need to add a compile dependency to our build.xml. So build.xml, and I simply have selected the one in the app folder. Uh, sorry, build.gradle. Build.gradle, and I've selected the one that's in the app folder. Now under dependencies, and I'll put this uh, into, I'll put this exact link in the video comments. Under dependencies, I want to add a compile dependency for play services. Also note my version there may be off just a little bit. I will go ahead and say that now. My version might not be compatible uh, with the version that I've used for my min SDK and my target SDK version. So I will, if I need to make a correction to that version, I will put the correct compile dependency in the comments of this video. Nonetheless, I have my compile dependency. Gradle knows it's out of sync, so I have to hit sync now. And then I'm going to go back to GPS Applant because this is the class where we are actually going to be gathering GPS information. Now in GPS Applant, I'm going to be doing a lot of work here. So uh, one moment as I put it into presentation mode. In GPS Applant, uh, we are going to start by looking at the onCreate method. OnCreate is a method, one of the Android lifecycle methods that we get to explore in more detail on this learning module. And OnCreate is called when we are creating an activity. So when we are just starting up the activity, but before it's visible to the user. So this is a good place for us to engage with the Google API client. So let's use that builder pattern. And the builder that we're going to invoke is one called Google API client dot builder. This might be a bit confusing, but Builder is actually an inner class of Google API Client, which is why we have a kind of funny construction going on here. Let me go ahead and say, yes, I want to import Google API Client. And a few more things that I need to do. Uh, I need to invoke new so that I can say I'm constructing a Builder object. And let's see what we have here. We have cannot resolve constructor Builder. So 
Uh, let's take a look at some documentation. And what we'll see is that this Google API client builder in our class uh, has a constructor that requires a context object. Now that's kind of tricky, but context essentially describes our Android application. And context is a superclass of our activity that we're currently in. In other words, if I scroll up, you see GPS a plant extends plant places activity, plant places activity extends app compat activity. If we keep going up in this construction, we're eventually going to get to a superclass called context. So back to GPS a plant. And all I need to do is I need to pass in a reference to the current object to satisfy that builder constructor. Okay, so we're getting a little bit further, but we still have some more things to do. So new Google API client dot builder. Uh, now let's add an API. So I'm going to invoke a method called add API and we'll say location services and then dot API. So we're saying of all of the things that are available to us in this Google API library, it's location services that we want. Let's go ahead and solve for that import. And now I'm also going to say add connection callbacks. Now remember what a callback is. A callback means we are invoking a method or maybe we're invoking a process which is executing on a separate thread or maybe even a separate computer altogether. When this process is complete, it wants to inform us that it's complete or it wants to tell us something has happened. So add connection callbacks is where we're saying when you are finished connecting, I want you to call the object that I'm passing and add connection callbacks. Let's take a look at what that object is. It's a connection callbacks listener. Let's see that in the documentation. Here's a method, add connection callbacks. Let's click and see what this tells us. So add connection callbacks is accepting a parameter variable called uh, of type connection callbacks. I click on connection callbacks and what do we see? Holy smokes, this is an interface. Remember our conversation on polymorphism and interfaces. One nice thing if a method accepts an interface is it's easy to adapt an existing class to implement that interface. In other words, watch what happens when I pass in the keyword this again, which means the current object. Right now we're still getting a red line, but I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to add an interface implementation to our activity GPS or class. I'm going to say implements, and then we're going to say Google API client dot connection callbacks. And I mouse down as soon as I do that, holy smokes, what happens? Notice that I get a red line on my class definition here and let's alt enter and see why that is. I have to implement some methods, okay? Now, why is that? Because as soon as I have implemented the interface connection callbacks, I have to provide behavior for two methods that are defined in the interface connection callbacks. Those two methods are on connected and on connection suspended. Now think about that, on connected and on connection suspended. We're saying that we want to attach to some GPS information. On connected means we have connected to our GPS satellite, essentially. On connection suspended means that we're no longer connected. So these callback methods make a lot of sense because once we are shaking hands with GPS and we're able to start receiving location information, our method on connected will be called and then we can start doing some behavior. If we lose that connection, on connection suspended is called, and maybe we pause from that behavior. I'm going to choose OK here, and what you'll see is that it provides an overridden implementation of both of these methods. And this is something that I can choose to handle at a later time, not too much later, but I do want to finish up our construction of our, uh, of our uh, Google API client. Now notice the red line has gone away from the underline of this, where just a few moments ago, this entire unit was redlined. Now it's just a little bit afterwards, which tells us that we're missing a semicolon like so. That's because my object now satisfies, my object of type GPS a plant activity now satisfies this method request where this method uh, connection callbacks, uh, sorry, let me just step back just one moment. The method on uh, add connection callbacks is anticipating a variable of type Google API client connection callbacks. Well, this is referring to the object of the class that I'm currently in. And if we take a look at that class, we see that sure enough, it does implement the interface 
Google API client connection callbacks. So now passing this into the add connection callbacks method does compile. I know that's a lot of thinking and a lot of words that are a little bit tricky, uh, but don't worry, we have one more chance to explore what I just talked about because we need to add one more listener. Add on connection failed listener. What if we're unable to attach to GPS service? What if we're on an Android device that doesn't have GPS service? Then we need to get a callback from that as well, which says something failed. You see where my cursor is, it's looking for an on connection failed listener. So I bet you can take a guess on where we're going to find an on connection failed listener. Well, guess what? On connection failed listener is yet another interface. And so we get to repeat what we just did because we know that we can easily add an interface to an existing class, provided that that existing class is able to provide an implementation for the methods defined in said interface. So let's go ahead and add one more interface. Uh, if we already have, have an interface, we simply add a comma, and then we say Google API client, and then we say on connection failed listener. Once again, the line goes red, alt enter, and it's going to tell me implement methods, and it wants me to implement a callback method now that's going to receive information when we were unable to connect to GPS. So once again, the class that we're currently in now uh, implements interface on connection failed listener. So I'm able to pass an object of the current class into the method on connection failed listener. Now we're almost home free. I just need one more method and that is the build method which says, okay, I have provided all of the options that I want. Now let's go ahead and build an object uh, from this Google API client builder class. In Android Studio, Control-Alt-V, if you see what changes there, we'll call this Google API client. It's simply taking the return type of this build method and it is assigning it to a variable. See here we see Google API client is the return type of this build method. And uh, so that's, a, that's actually a class type, which is the return type of this build method. We are using that type and declaring a variable of that type. The Google API client builder is taking all of these options into account and then it is going to build an object of that type. It's going to store the built object into this variable, Google API client. So from here, we can do a lot more. We can put together a location request, which we're going to do in our next video. Uh, and then we can take a look at a location listener as well. So little more than I want to cover in this video. So we'll pick that up in the next video. But nonetheless, we've had a description and an example implementation of the builder design pattern. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.